If you have a smaller soundbar like the Sonos Beam Gen 2 or the Ray, the larger Sonos Sub might be overkill. That's where this nifty little sub comes in. I tried the Sonos Beam Gen 2 slightly over a year ago and it was super impressive. It was a great little soundbar for your desktop or for pairing with secondary televisions. That being said, because it's smaller than normal, it does get a little unbalanced when pairing with the hefty Sonos Sub. Now that Sonos has introduced their new Sub Mini, I think this is the perfect companion to their smaller soundbars. Before we get into the review, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Let's talk design first. The Sub Mini is incredibly small. Weighing in at just around 6.35 kilograms, it's lightweight enough to be moved around if needed. But more than that, the sub measures 31 cm by 23 cm by 23 cm. Although it's a cylindrical shape this time around, which means it should be able to fit more easily into your home's aesthetic or to be tucked away in a corner discreetly. This compactness is accomplished by Sonos putting both 15 cm woofers opposite each other resulting in a force cancelling effect to minimise vibrations while producing a frequency range that the company claims goes down to 25Hz. The power and ethernet ports are located at the bottom, and although there's no groove to guide the wire, there are four rubber feet along the bottom to lift the subwoofer up so that the wire doesn't get squashed. Of course, there's also Wi-Fi connectivity here, and I expect that most people will be using that rather than the ethernet wire. We paired it with the Beam Gen 2, which is my favourite compact soundbar from Sonos, and setup is as fuss free as always. It's picked up automatically by the app after plugging it into power and turning on. An initial setup and adding to a system is super easy. There's very little we can talk about in terms of actual sound because, well, this is a subwoofer. What I can say though is that the bass increase is quite significant right off the bat for music, with added rumble and deeper slam in the lows. Here's a short test uh, with the Sub Mini versus without the Sub Mini. and shows though it's just okay. The first time I watched a show, I actually had to put my hand into the middle to check uh, the woofers were actually firing because it didn't feel like it was on. Once I tweaked the settings a bit and increased the sub level, it became better for sure, but it just didn't provide the oomph that I was looking for unless I brought up the combined volume. Overall, the bass increase is quick and responsive and very well suited to music in my opinion. Best of all, because of the design, there's no rattling or vibrating from the subwoofer at all. So like, you can check this bureau out, you know, you can put coffee or like water on top of it and you can see that the liquid doesn't really even move at all. That being said, the pricing strategy here is very odd. The Sub Mini costs 869 Singapore dollars or 429 US dollars, which makes it the same price as the Sonos Beam Gen 2 here in Singapore and even more expensive than the Sonos Ray. Well, yes, there aren't really any other better options if you have one of the smaller soundbars and you don't want to spring, you know, 1,004 Singapore dollars or 749 US for the Sonos Sub. It's just peculiar. Most consumers would likely take a look at the price tag and just forget about getting a Sub. I really hope that Sonos drops the price for the Sub Mini soon because that price tag will likely put off a lot of people. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Sonos Sub Mini. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to us and like this video. Till the next one, see you guys!